Conditions include destroying the portals from which hordes of enemies appear, chasing and defeating enemies, guiding a ball, and more. Guiding a ball. Guiding a ball. <laughs> no, I'm just screwing with you. These are these are super easy. How do you feel about splat zones, though? Inside order, you get higher in the spire, equip the chips, and sub gently as you lose all progress due to a dumb mistake. This DLC introduces a never before seen in the series roguelike mode. It's designed for multiple runs and to be played again and again and again. Obviously, as a major paid DLC, it's getting comparisons to Octo Expansion. Does it measure up? Is the story more gripping? Is it all around just better? No. Not, not really, but it's still fun. I do like this DLC, however, I don't think anyone should buy Splatoon 3 for this DLC. And if you didn't already get it as part of the pass, I'd say hold off until they include it with a higher tier of NSO. Alas, poor side order suffers the same fate as base launch Splatoon 3, where to me, it feels more like an early access title rather than a full-fledged game or even DLC. The building blocks are all there, but no one's really arranged them in any meaningful way. This wounds me greatly because I was hoping side order would bring back a plethora of peeps to the game akin to how Octo Expansion revitalized 2. I do think base Splatoon 3 is in pretty good state now, but this DLC just doesn't have the draw its predecessor had, and I think after a week of the next season, it'll probably be as populated and popular as it was prior to this. But I digress. The gameplay loop of side order is simple. You pick a weapon for your run, you hop in the elevator, and you pick your poison and weirdly enough start the stage by doing something 90% of the fan base won't know how to do, before rinse and repeating 30 times. There are five main objectives each four can have. Poppin' portals, boppin' balls, floundering fishies, sappin' zones, or turbo tower control. Poppin' portals has you destroying enemy spawners while hordes of enemies hunt you. Boppin' balls are the ball missions from Octo Expansion, but dumbed down for today's modern gamer. Floundering fishies is the fleeing enemies from the single player campaign, but now they're fish! Zappin' zones is splat zones, but a million times worse because one drop from these flying fricks will cap it for the enemies. And turbo tower control is basically the ranked mode, but instead of working the pole, you work the pole. To... to death by shooting it. There are multiple factoids to consider when rising in your claim to fame. Each option has difficulty tied to it, a stage, a monetary reward, a power-up, and potentially modifiers as well. So sometimes you'll see a power-up you really want, but in your least favorite stage. Or maybe there's a big cash prize, but it's with a bad modifier and lackluster power. Every once in a while too, you'll get the option of a vending machine, which is essentially a free floor. You'll have the choice of spending your dodge to purchase new specials, subs, or chips. Even if you don't buy anything, you progress, so if you walk out empty-handed, it can still be better than the rigorous danger zones you had as an alternative. The two modifiers are bonus and danger, bonus being good and either cramming your inventory full of power-ups or giving you the chance to earn more dodge by foregoing certain actions. Danger, on the other hand, introduces negative effects like turning the lights off, filling the stage with enemy ink, or laughing at people that specked in the luck or drone. The chip categories impact various aspects of your character, sort of similar to gear in the base game, but cranked up to 11. They can increase pretty much any of your base stats, and depending on your weapon can even change things like charge time or add damage effects to rolls and such. The more crazy options being the luck and drone builds in my opinion. Luck builds rely on defeating enemies to start chain item drops, essentially allowing non-stop armor, specials, and bombs, and even forcing the enemies to sit through the unskippable intro of Splatoon 2. Another spec is in your drone, which is a new mechanic. In this entry, Pearl gets even better by becoming a Robo Girl and assists you on your climb. You can use her to glide around the stage and she'll point out enemies and attack them alongside you. You can purchase upgrades for her and get chips to make her even more of a menace to the point where she could carry your matches, but again, it's quite the gamble since one day Danger could negate her entirely. When you do fail a run, you can purchase permanent upgrades from Marina with pearls, the upgrade currency. You don't just like hand her multiple versions of her girlfriend. You can increase and decrease damage, add extra lives, continues, and all sorts of things. The catch being that it's a it's a grind to unlock some of them. One of the rewards lets you get up to triple pearls the less hacks you have on, but the caveat being if you fail a run, you get nothing good day, sir! If you did fail a run, you have the option of returning to it for a hefty price of pearls. I did kind of like that they made this mode accessible for people who haven't played roguelikes before, but they still punish you for being bad. Or a wuss. For instance, if you don't do a danger stage, more and more will show up later in your run, which can be a lot worse at higher floors. The loop is pretty fun, it's essentially just a mix of the single player campaign, while also sort of being a solo salmon run. Some of the chips do let you feel really good, I know I was riding high with my Splatana run, dropping foes with an Octo Roll or Lunch Attack, and admittedly, I almost beat my first run with a Lucky Bomb build until I got smacked with the no item drop modifier. Like there's a good amount of fun to be had, but my biggest gripe that I have with this is that it just lacks 
Roguelikes. Variety. That's kind of the cornerstone of a good roguelike. After two or three runs, you have seen pretty much everything that this has to offer. There are only three new bosses, and a good chunk of the enemies are just reskins of existing ones with a newish physics system. Even if you counted all the enemies as new, you see every type halfway through your first run. The motifs of the stages are essentially just Breath of the Wild Shrine Splatoon Edition, and the actual layouts of the map are very, very samey. Every now and then, you'll get one that seems more like an Octo Expansion stage, which is kind of cool, but generally it's just a box with enemy spawns and the rotated objectives plastered around. In multiple runs, I would literally go to a stage, beat it, and then get the same stage on the next floor just with a different objective. At floors 10 and 20 you have a boss but there's only three options a ball a top or girl power easy peasy edition making them even more of a chore than a challenge even the dialogue runs itself out after a few runs which sucks because i was enjoying learning about some marina and oct backstory or even just marina taking any opportunity to talk about how much she loves pearl oct either knowing what they are or pining to be part of the threesome they're never gonna have and then h just drooling in the corner. Seriously though, these two are so lesbian in this. Good for them. Good for them. Comparing it to other roguelikes was probably my biggest mistake because I can't remember how long it took me to hear repeat dialogue in Hades, but in side order, I heard it within three hours. Hey, maybe they planned that because it's Splatoon 3 hours of content that are stretched out. I also feel shafted because there's almost no cutscenes in this, like maybe 15 or 20 minutes of scenes, and most of them are just in the elevator. The story felt kind of lacking to me. I thought it was going to be some kind of like deep dive into the mind, and I guess it sort of was, but then they wussed out and made it a VR thing. What happened to all the cool art from the trailers that seem to be showcasing the past? Most of the lore is tied to the unlocked text files, and again, as far as I can tell, there's no secret boss. Yep. Nothing like Inner Agent 3. You do unlock replica weapons for every pallet you clear, which the original story mode was lacking, and beating this once nets you 8's hand-me-downs and an emote. You do get more unlocks by clearing it multiple times with different weapons, but the only thing that changes between runs is a few lines of dialogue between the final boss fights. I did like the dev entries, and having Pearl and Marina comment on various characters did make me exhale out of the nose or smile like a dork a lot of the time. There's a lot of potential here, and it just sucks that it's so bare bones. I've already seen people coping, saying that maybe they'll update it and add more, and I want to be wrong, please let me be wrong, but they won't. They already got your money. I mean, sequels are supposed to go above and beyond. Why does this cost more than Octo Expansion? And don't tell me it's because of the plaza, because neither of the plazas you unlock have the mini games that the originals had. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see Splatoon 3 coming back with this. I think the lack of content on launch and the lack of content in this are going to solidify this game as, well, a disappointment for a lot of people, unfortunately, because that does make me sad. I love this game. I did still enjoy this DLC, but I'm not really sure that I'll come back to it outside of like a speed run one day, maybe. And again, these are strictly my opinions. If you enjoy it, that's great. Let me know what your favorite part was. I know a lot of this was negative, and admittedly, it's my own fault for hyping it up in my head as something that the DLC was never going to be. I was expecting something on par with Octo expansion, but instead I got another early access title for full price. Seriously though, this is 25 and for the same price you can grab Hades, which has way more content. Or Cadence of Hyrule if you need a Nintendo roguelike specifically.